We continue to successfully manage Walpole to its highest level of financial performance in the town's history throughout an a period of unprecedented growth. The proposed 2021 budget incorporates the latest information available to our finance team. Throughout the remaining winter and spring months, I expect that we will have an extensive discussion and debate regarding the budget that is being presented this evening. I remain, I remain committed to a budget process that is transparent and informative. The message I offer you tonight is one of continued confidence for the bright future for Walpole. The proposed 2021 budget continues to make investments to ensure that Walpole is financially sound, safe, and supports public education. Walpole's growth is expected to continue into 2021 and beyond. Prior to providing an overview of the revenue and expenditures, I'd like to highlight some of the projects occurring around Walpole. Now that the police, fire, council, and aging public works buildings are complete, the town has turned its attention to improving the school buildings and recreation facilities in Walpole. The Route 1A facility, which is located in South Walpole, was recently approved at the Fall Town Meeting. Funding for this project came for, from a variety of sources, including funds on hand, free cash, previous appropriations, and the town's existing debt budget. I would note that all of the funds needed for this project came within the limits of Proposition 2.5. The new facility is set to include two new turf fields, two multi-use grass fields, a baseball diamond, a softball diamond, walking paths, and more than 250 parking spaces. It is expected that the turf fields will be completely completed early next winter and the grass fields will be fertilized and ready for the 2021 grow season with playing space available on the grass fields sometime in 2022. I am pleased to report that the town continues to work with the Massachusetts School Building Authority to advance Walpole's application for the, a middle school project. The MSBA recently voted this past fall to invite the town to conduct a feasibility study for the Bird Middle School with the study to include a potential consolidation of all students for grades six through eight. The Walpole School Building Committee voted unanimously to award uh, the contract for the Compass to, for as our project manager to Compass Project Management uh, to oversee the MSBA process. Once we receive formal approval from the MSBA, the town will begin the process of selecting an architectural firm to conduct the feasibility study as the next phase in the process. I'd like to recognize and thank the School Building Committee, which continues to work hard to complete all of the milestones identified in the eligibility period. One final item I'd like to highlight on the municipal side is the high school feasibility study, which is about to get underway next month. Last fall, town meeting appropriated $400,000 to complete the study and review the areas of concern at the high school that have been identified by the school committee. The feasibility study will provide a scope and manner in which the town can proceed with addressing the deficiencies that may be identified at Walpole High School. It is anticipated that the feasibility analysis will be completed by the end of 2020. On the commercial side and residential side, growth continues to progress throughout town. Some of the major projects that are ongoing or expected to begin soon are listed on screen. As you can see, Walpole continues to experience a considerable amount of uh, commercial and residential growth. One item of note on this slide is the 300 unit uh, project that is recently received by the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Summer Street project. The Zoning Board is set to uh, consider this matter on March 4th uh, with deliberation expected to uh, last an extended period of time. On the residential, uh, residential cons uh, construction continues at a steady pace. On the commercial side, we continue to see projects that have expanded the commercial and industrial businesses offered in town. I'd like to commend and thank Community Planning Director Ashley Clark, Building Commissioner Mike Yanovich, uh, Conservation Landis, uh, Agent Landis Hershey, Board of Health Director Melissa Ranieri, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Board of Health, the Planning Board, and the Conservation Commission for all the work that has gone into each of these projects that we have listed out above. Moving on. The proposed FY21 budget relies on revenue estimates based upon the latest information we have available at this time. The budget being presented this evening does not use reserves or one-time revenues to assist in the balancing process. The overall general fund budget increase is 3.66%. The overall anticipated to be raised by the tax levy is about $78.4 million, which utilizes the full limits of Proposition 2.5 and, 
and project projects new growth at $925,000. In addition to the funds derived from Proposition 2.5, the recommended budget also utilizes local receipts, which make up about $7.5 million. I do not anticipate that our preliminary FY21 revenue projections will increase substantially over the coming weeks and months based upon the analysis that our finance team has conducted. The amount requested for appropriation for the FY21 budget totaled $98.66 million. After meeting with department heads and our finance team, it was determined that $1.3 million in cuts were necessary in order to balance the budget. The total amount recommended for appropriation for the various departments was $97.36 million. Areas on the expense side that I'd like to call your attention to include the following. The Highway Department, which is responsible for 120 miles worth of roadways, sidewalks, storm drains, traffic signals, line painting, guardrails, and fencing. This year, the DPW Director and Highway Superintendent have asked for a new position in the Highway Department to assist with the town's ever-growing roadways. Since 1980, the town has added 30 miles worth of roads. However, the number of Highway Department employees has actually decreased from 14 to 7. The request would raise the total number of employees in the Highway Department from the current 7 employees to 8 and allow the Highway Department to keep up with Walpole's continued growth. The recommended budget also makes investments in our public safety departments as well. The number of calls and outreach responses from both the police and fire department continue to rise each year. The Walpole Fire Department budget is set to see an increase of $207,000, or just about 4.7%. The recommended budget for the department adds two new firefighter positions. I am optimistic that the budget process, as we progress, may yield an additional firefighter position for FY21. The Police Department budget will increase by about $182,000, which is just about 3%. With over 25,000 residents and 44 current officers, Walpole Police Department approximately has 1.74 officers per 1,000 inhabitants. I am pleased to report that the recommended budget adds three new police officers, which will bring the department from 44, 44 total sworn officers to 47, and increase that ratio from one point up to 1.88 per 1,000. One of the new positions that is included in, in, the new budget, in the budget is the position of police lieutenant. This position is being included prior to some of the new buildings coming online to ensure that the department's reporting and chain of command infrastructure remains fully functional and continues to operate in an efficient and an effective manner. I commend both the police and fire departments for their daily efforts and, and protection. Chief Bailey and Chief Carmichael continue to do an excellent job managing their departments. Moving on to public education, which continues to be one of Walpole's top priorities. This year, the public education line is recommended to be $48.74 million. We continue to wait on the financial details from the state regarding the recent education reform. I am grateful to Walpole's legislative delegation for their leadership in the, and throughout the development of the reform. The, re the recommended budget for the Walpole Poli School Department stands at $47.6 million which is a 3.3% increase over FY20. School and town officials have met multiple times during leading up to this message in order to work together to ensure that the town is maximizing the funds that we're able to res responsibly appropriate as part of the FY21 budget process. Superintendent Goff and the school business manager, Mike uh, Frischa, have explained to me that the school anticipates a $315,000 reduction in Medicaid reimbursements and an additional $277,000 in special ed requirements in FY21. The school committee has yet to vote on their FY21 budget request to be submitted to this office. However, it is my understanding the committee is expecting to submit a budget with an estimated uh, increase of 5%, which will uh, account for a budget uh, gap of approximately $860,000. If we were able to maintain the 66-34 split, that would mean an additional $1.3 million in revenue that would need to be identified. School officials have advised the finance team that school department needs an additional $324,000 for a total increase of 4% in order to maintain level services and continue to meet the mandates that are being passed down to local government. The proposed budget has been adjusted to allow for a 68-32 split between the town and school department. School officials have advised 
that the school committee will be reviewing all of their fees in order to ensure that they are maximizing their revenue. I anticipate the health insurance figures and a few other budgets may come in favorably later on this spring. I remain optimistic that everyone will be able to work together in order to review all the options to bridge this gap and address the school department's needs. The Council on Aging Personnel line is set to see an increase of 9.1% due in part to the additional hours for the van drivers and some additional staffing hours for the building. As one may expect, the usage of the Council on Aging has dra dramatically increased since the building opened. The total usage has increased from 25 visitors on average per day in 2016 to 142 average visitors per day in 2019. <coughs> Overall, the number of total active seniors using the center has gone from 813 to over 2,100 per year during that same period. This is truly an incredible amount of growth in a very short period of time. The proposed debt budget is uh, $4.26 million, which is about a $75,000 increase over FY20. Walpole continues to modestly increase this budget each year to assist with the anticipated school building needs that we will be needed in the next few years. I am pleased that the Walpole Public Schools are going to be able to benefit from the foresight demonstrated by previous select boards and finance committees during the development of previous debt budgets. The assessments in fringe benefits line is budgeted at a 5.2% increase at this time. I expect this line will, we will see some changes here as the health insurance carrier finalizes their FY21 projections. The budgeted OPEB contribution has increased from $500,000 in FY20 to $525,000 in FY21. This recommendation maintains our ongoing OPEB contribution at a moderate increase. The proposed budget moderately increases the stabilization account from 300,000 to 310,000. One item of note is uh, I'd like to point out is since 2004, the town has increased the OPEB account balance, um, from, sorry, since 2014 in just six years, from about $1 million to just over $4.8 million, and the stabilization account has gone from $1.8 million to $5.1 million. The inc these increases have gone a long way in preserving Walpole's long-term financial stability and have allowed the town to maintain a solid AA plus bond rating. The capital budget request last fall exceeded $13.4 million. Town meeting voted to fund just over $12.3 million. I commend the capital budget committee for their efforts. Some of those funded projects are identified on screen. Moving on to sewer and water. The recommended budget totals for sewer and water are listed on screen along with their retained earning balances. Retained earning balances continue to see a healthy balance and uh, I look forward to working with the sewer and water commissioners during the upcoming budget season. At this time, there are currently 25 articles that are set to be considered at the Springtown meeting. A detailed description of the proposed articles will be available on the town's website after the select board signs and publishes the warrant. The fiscal 21 budget is balanced and ready for the finance committee's review. I'd like to thank and recognize members of our finance team, Marilyn Thompson, Jody Cuneo, Dennis Fliss, Mike Donovan, and Patrick Shield. Each of our departments are comprised of dedicated employees who do an excellent job working towards the goal throughout the year. The level of professionalism and sense of teamwork exhibited by town officials each year is something that I am truly proud to be a part of. And finally, I'd like to thank the Board of Select, sorry, Select Board, I keep correcting myself on that one, uh, and the residents of Walpole for their continued confidence and support throughout the budget cycle. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> budget books are available for pickup. Uh, just come on down the end of the hall and we'll give them out.